welcome back to Rick's Scale Model Fix and the build continues with Kinetic's new 148 scale Pucara. In the end of the last video we saw completion of the cockpit and we were just waiting for the paint to dry. With the paint now dry the cockpit tub has been assembled. It still needs the harnesses and everything attached to the seats but everything's been built up and added ready for this to be cemented into one of the fuselage sides. The seats are just a loose fit and they'll be added at the end of the build to save damage. Before the cockpit tub is added to a fuselage side you need the nose gear bay add-in which is really quite well detailed with some extra parts that get dropped in and there's some sidewall detail that needs adding to the fuselage halves. So we've just got to add some sidewall detail before we uh, fit the cockpit tub in and it's nice that some detail is provided by Kinetic rather than just being a flat uh, space and as ever once we add something we're going to then fit that it check that it's not compromised the fit of any of the parts at all so we're just dry fitting the cockpit tub which it does seem to not want to really fit that bit so we just need to move that back slightly in there and it does all go in just checking that everything's in alignment perfectly because when you come to close the fuselage sides up this could stop the fuselage from mating and it could result in quite a large seam so that's fine and that's good to add the details now to the other side so we're just adding the final details to the starboard fuselage section Just working from underneath, just adding a little bit of Tamiya glue and nudge to keep it in place. And then again, we're just going to check that it doesn't hinder the fit of the cockpit tub in any way, shape, or form, which glad to report it doesn't. And we've got the makings of what looks to be quite a nice cockpit in there. So we're just going to check the fit of the fuselage halves again so there seems to be a little bit of an alignment issue with the cockpit tool so it's wanting to push everything out and it is front end that's causing the issue and it is that side panel so what we shall do is we shall check again that this side fits in as this one seems to be the one that's causing the issue and it is, it's pushing this panel out. So there we go. That's in. And everything's now in place. So what we'll do is we'll secure this side, I think, first. Making sure everything lines up, which it does. And we'll just glue this in now. And we're just going to hold that while the glue bites. And then we know everything's perfectly lined up. Because the last thing you want to do is spread the fuselage any and cause it to uh, open a seam down the nose or the spine of the aircraft. That's going to cause you problems with filling and sanding. So all then nicely lined up 
and then we can drop hopefully just drop this side in and we've got perfect fit so the cockpit tub nestled in there now looks quite nice quite well detailed so we'll just set about gluing a few large halves together so we'll get some Tamiya tape strips just to assist I think what we'll do is we'll start at the nose and we're just going to run some Tamiya cement down and squeeze it together I don't know if you can see on camera but we've got a tiny bead of cement forming which we can just sand off once it's dry and it'll automatically fill the small gap that we had there probably from me sanding the mating parts mating surfaces down there's not a lot underneath so we'll work on this rear spine and we can do this from inside we just need a longer brush and the fit is generally uh, very good I'm just going to squeeze that in so just taking your time working around the model making sure everything's in alignment will save you a lot of time filling and sanding so I'm going to try and get that bead of cement to form just out the top And the good thing with the Tamiya quick dry is it dries qu quick, quickly and therefore it can just help you uh, assemble the model because we can already tape this nose section up while the glue dries properly and that way it keeps just everything in alignment. So don't be in a rush. Just take your time working sections and you'll save yourself a lot of filling and sanding. Making sure everything is lined up that it needs to be. Don't forget don't run any tape, any glue near any of the masking tape that you've put on, otherwise it'll track under the masking tape and ruin the surface of the plastic. Just working in small sections at a time. Just allowing the glue to run along the seam. And making as good a joint as possible. In the first instance. Which will save you a lot of filling and sanding later on. So it's worth spending time here. As it's time saved elsewhere in the build. Just squeezing everything together to make sure it all fits. And we're on this last section underneath which seems to want to splay open a little bit. And we've just got a section here on the spine that needs a little bit of glue. Glue in that. And then we'll just work on this section, so working our way along, holding the pushing the seam together once the glue's in. To get the best fit that we can. And then we'll just hold that in place because that wants to spring apart. And there we have our fuselage in place. 
So this instrument panel looks a bit precarious there, it's going to get easily damaged. So we're going to have a look at putting something on that, I think, perhaps the comb in, just to protect it. So we can now use some wider Tamiya tape, pulled quite tight, just to hold the rear fuselage tightly in place. And at the end of the day, the upper seam is really, really good. The lower seam is exactly that. It's on the underside of the airframe. So if you've got to do any corrective work, it's always better to work on the underside than the upper surface. There's not a lot in terms of panel lines anyway to rescribe, so we should be okay with this one. So we're just going to attach part A13, which is the spine of the excess hatches. So we're just removing the remnants of the attachment points and that surface is a little bit rough so we're just going to give that uh, a quick sand over. And this should hopefully just drop in place and the fit is perfect as you can see from there. I'm probably going to use a bit of super glue just to hold that in place. In fact I will. I'll do that when the fuselage is dry. And then we need to protect this instrument panel. So we're going to uh, insert the comb in over the top which will protect that from uh, from our hands. Oh, if we can just get it to fit. Like so. So that will need painting first so we'll need to paint that black. And at this point in the build it's always worth just checking the fit of the canopy. And it can help you avoid issues later. I'm just not wanting to put really too much pressure on the clear parts and I think that's testament to the fit of the kit and the kinetics engineering that that is a perfect drop in fit so no way no issues with the fuselage spread or anything like that but this is just a little bit tricky to uh, other than there because I think the instrument panel itself just holds it up and again, we'll just try it with the combing in place. And again, the fit is perfect. So that can be added at the end of the build without fear of having a seam line around the finished uh, model. I'm not too concerned about the rear section as it will be posed open anyway. So I'll get these paint, painted up and added. And you can join me back in a few minutes. So we're back with the, working on the Pacara fuselage. And we've cleaned up the joints and the seams ready for the primer. Cleaned up quite well. Uh, what I didn't realise was there was quite a few raised rivets on the fuselage. And I've just blasted it with a sanding stick and removed all the detail. So... Just be careful while you're doing doing that. So I think I'm probably going to have to look at re-riveting this now. So with the fuselage pretty much complete, it's time to turn our attention to the wings. So the wing section comes in a single span lower portion that then fits into this area of the airframe and the fit just dry fitting quickly is pretty good. You might just need a few little clamps just to hold everything in place. So it's quite evident now that this is no small model. It's going to look quite impressive when it's done. So the first thing to do was to secure the main landing gear bays into the wheel well. There's some lovely detail 
to be found in that wheel bay just as there is in the nose gear bay and then on the wing upper surface we have an engine cowling that needed to be secured in place with the exhaust and again the fit is impeccable the fit of the wings halves together is really good so we're just going to uh, glue these together now we're just using the same principles as we did with the fuselage I just noticed got a bit of a rem remnants of a sprue attachment point there so we're going to use the same principles as we did the fuselage just working in sections trying to get the best fit that we can so it's going to be really important to get this area as good a fit as possible so that it doesn't affect the fit of the nasal which comes in two sections so we'll secure that in place and make sure that that's good and we're just going to hold that with some Tamiya tape and then we'll just do the other side we might need a tiny bit of filler just with this joint try and get the spread right if you can get this right now it's going to make fitting the front of the nasal so much easier and then we'll work our way along the wing just allowing the glue to flow into the joint working in small sections at a time and pinching while the glue dries and work our way along the leading edge So just pinching it while the glue dries, squeezing that bead out that we want, wing tip, making sure we get the edges of the arrow on together. Are quite thin, I must admit. After working on the Harrier, that needed considerable thinning in that area. Flap recess, and just making sure everything goes together. Can leave that to dry we're just checking for any misalignment before we leave the assembly and then we've got the front of the nasal which features some nice uh, details for the vents and hinge access panel hinges and this is just going to go on the front and as you can see with some care that's a perfect fit again it's just going to need a smidge in a mr surfacer to uh, blend that into the fuselage so we'll do that once everything's dry and we've cleaned this seam up so it's really important to get that right I think the wheel well does help align it so I'll work on the other side off camera and uh, can join me back at the workbench when I've done that with the wings now completed set aside to dry it's time to work on the tail feathers so we're doing the tail planes and elevators now a nice touch from Kinetic to keep the trailing edge really thin is they've moulded the elevator as a single piece with an insert to make up the rest of the elevator so it keeps that nice 
trailing edge with no uh, tricky seams to fill in. So we're just removing the mould gates and the fit as we've come to expect with this kit is perfect. So we'll just get good help in of time here glue and we're just going to hold those in place and give them a good push down and let them dry. So just need to move that and they're waiting to be added to the model. So we're just adding the port tailplane, doing that with a bit of super glue. The fit is good. Just holding it in place till the super glue bites, and then making sure on the cutting mat grids that we've got it in perfect alignment, which we have, and that's going to need nothing more than a slight dab of Mr. Surfacer just to make sure the joints are good. The fit is nice, so we're just going to need a little bit of Mr. Surfacer just in there. And just in there. Right. There's the Mr. Surfacer in. Once that's dry, we'll remove that with cotton bud dipped in IPA just to remove the excess and then just to make the joint secure we're just going to add some Tamiya glue to the underneath and we're just checking one last time make sure they're at 90 degrees which they are so with the work on the tail end done we're just going to dry fit this wing piece we're not going to add it to the model until the front nasals have been added and that any corrective work has been done because it would be a pain trying to get in the inboard sides of the nasals if there was any sanding or anything to do so the fit of that is pretty good so we're not going to need to do any massive remedial work with the wing and the wing root the all important wing roots are superb once they've used the old uh, masking tape trick wing tip to wing tip just to close that gap up they'll be fantastic so we've got to work out how much nose weight we need to uh, stick in this because it's definitely going to be a tail sitter so we shall do that get the wings on and that will conclude part two of kinetics 148 scale pukara build